Who are you? I don't know, but I'm writing to you anyway. Where are you? How far in the future? Where'd you find my journal? I may never know, but you can know me from what I put down on these pages. I come from a little village in the mountains. No one has left here since before I was born. But our lives changed overnight, just a few days ago when my best friend had a prophetic dream. A vision that the elder said means this season is going to end soon. The world is about to enter a new era. A great change is coming. Everyone was afraid. I was surrounded by questions and I began to feel how little I know. What is this season that is about to end? And why is it ending? What exactly is out there that could turn the world inside out? If there are still voices singing and laughing in the wilderness, I could record them before they're gone. I also thought of my dad, who always wanted to see the outside world but never did. So, I asked if I could leave. The elder had one condition for letting me go that I take what I collect to the museum vault, a palace of art and memory at the edge of the earth. She says it's the only place safe from the turmoil of a changing season. I hope that's where you're reading this now. I can't stop the change that is coming, but this time on earth could live on in these pages. What it looks like, sounds like, how it feels to be alive right now. I'm writing to you at the crack of dawn on the morning I leave home. I can smell breakfast cooking in the other room and I can hear my mom's voice.
my bag and dad's camera, ready for the great departure. Burners on the table, ready to make a pendant. Mom is cooking sweet bark soup. She got out some old tapes. You're up. What are you doing standing there? Time to get going. It's gonna be a beautiful morning. I'm making progress. I found the burner, camera, recorder, travel bag. Breakfast is in progress. Still gotta make a pendant. We haven't used this in so long. Good thing I saved the instructions. Just as you would use a shield to protect your... An identity pendant protects your mind. Your thoughts, memories, Everything that makes you, you. We don't wear them here in the village anymore. But if you're going into the outside world, I'll feel better when you've got a pendant shield in you. Diseases of the mind, like the dream sickness. We don't know what caused it. We heard people suddenly fell into an eternal sleep these were years of wild rumors, and half of them turned out to be true. In times of war, a pendant can be used to identify a body. <sighs> Let's skip that part. Objects have two layers, the physical and the mental. The pendant needs to absorb both. One, collect a sentimental object for each sense, sound, smell, Feel, sight, taste. Two, feel the sense and speak aloud a memory of the object. Three, feed the object into the burner. The memory will leave the speaker as it is transferred to the pendant. That means I'll forget the memory after I say it. It's supposed to be painless, at least. No. You must remember everything. That's your role. The pendant needs this little sacrifice. I want to be sure it works. Don't be afraid. A few memories is a small price to pay for knowing you'll be safe. Okay, so. This old tape should work for our sense of sound. I remember. You and I fell asleep listening to this tape. Your dad came home. We all rested together until it got dark. an odd feeling, like an absence disappearing. The empty space fills itself back in until I forget that I forgot anything at all. <sighs> I'm glad I'm only losing a few memories. If I lost too many, I wouldn't even know who you are. You should pick the rest of the objects. I'll lose the memories, but you'll have them in the pendant forever. So they should be important to you. They should be parts of your identity you want to be sure to protect. 
So think about what these items and what the memories would preserve about you. Let's do smell next. Find an object with a strong odor and that holds a piece of you. Sweet wax honey. How I've tried to save things. Ancient perfume sweet. Nothing is ever lost. Childhood. Too sweet, too old. I always wanted to experience new things. Nothing. I used to see souls everywhere. Granite, seaside, darkness. This speaks to how my mom loves me. What did you choose for smell? Let's breathe in deep. Oh, I remember it so well. It's not as bad now, but in the old days, not many children live long enough to grow up. We believed if a child could make it to the age of nine, they'd be all right. This print was made of your hand when you turned nine. Your father and I couldn't believe we really had a healthy girl. An old deep fear inside of me finally went away. And we saw you would just keep growing and growing, that everything was going to be okay. Now touch. Pick something with the texture you like. Soft, cold, smooth. I used to see souls everywhere. Wax, soft, ancient wall. I was loved by people I have no memory of. Creased paper lines. I take care of fragile things. So what did you end up choosing? Okay, feel the little bird. I remember your friend Pate made this little bird. You wanted to protect it, keep it like a pet. I thought it wouldn't last long. It's just a bit of folded paper, but you took good care of it, and years went by. You'd done it. It was still intact. That was when I started to understand what kind of person you are. You will chaperone these delicate things into the future. I'm fine. 
Let's do sight next. Pick something that... that looks nice. Dried mountain flowers. Nothing is ever lost. So, what did you end up choosing? Your dad used to bring these flowers home from his climbs. They only grow high up in the mountains. He was a great climber. He even found us a new source of water. I hope after he would climb less, maybe even retire. But he always wanted to explore, and the only direction to go was up. Maybe the Elder is letting you leave out of guilt for what happened to your dad. If someone has the energy to leave, it needs to go somewhere. He fell into the Fitz Ravine. He never found his body. But doesn't he rest with us at night? Doesn't he appear in our dreams? How can such a human being depart this earth without leaving behind a trace? A trace as strong as the flowers would still have their scent. Darling, I don't want to lose this one. I can't lose this one. Can we put the flowers back, please? Yes, you're right. For taste, we can eat breakfast and feed some to the burner. The memory I'll lose is the one we're forming right now. I want you to have it forever. Standing here, you're having a last taste of home. Now you're protected by lost memories. A gem of home around your neck. This is my only condition for letting you go. You must promise me never to take the pendant off. And never tamper with it. Okay? Then I'm okay with you leaving. I think your camera and bag are still in your room. It's time to gather them up. I've lost so much. How could the world ask me to lose you too? Look at us. There we are. There we were. We'll always be right here on this beautiful morning.
I just performed a ritual with my mom. The moment has passed, but I'll record it in these pages for you for the future. I never knew when my mom would share a memory of dad while cooking on a walk with no warning. It knocked the wind out of me. Rituals take this grief and give it a shape and a story. Filling in this journal is a ritual too, but for a loss that hasn't hit us yet. I've brought tools to record the sights and sounds of this season. I'll start by recording the only place I've ever known. Dr. Fumio. Last night, my friends wrote down their hopes for my trip and tied them to the branches of this tree. Remembering everything must be painful. Dr. Fumio brought peace to so many people here. Dr. Fumio and his son founded Cairo back in 776. They live on through our traditions.
there are three murals celebrating Dr. Fumio's work. This is Dr. Fumio and his son. The statue isn't as old as it looks. The artist wore it down to give it a feeling of ancientness and the authority that comes with it. soaking my feet in here on hot days. Pate loves fish, even though nobody here has ever seen one. Smells like an old man's toes dipped in cinnamon. I had to drink this gross potion last night. Like my pendant, it's supposed to protect my brain. This is a healing instrument created by Dr. Fumio. It draws on the pure mountain air. Dr. Fumio said the dream sickness was caused by something very powerful. He wasn't able to cure it. Pate's little daydream of leaving this place, of seeing something weird. This is the cafe where my dad used to read his poems. He wrote one for me. Maybe he wrote it for you too. The elder sought out Dr. Fumio to cure her mother, who was suffering from time misperception.
Dr. Fumio was an important person, but we also just have a need to put a human face on events that are beyond our control. He may have felt just as scared and helpless as everyone else. The ruins in the distance were used to make us afraid of the outside world. Dangerous and impossible to reach, they said. Caro village was founded during the modernity. Much later, Dr. Fumio arrived and remade it in his image. This flower means you're in my thoughts. The morning after the search was called off for dad, our doorstep was covered in them. Is it recording? Yes. Okay. How to leave home for my daughter. Find a sacred square of earth. Lay down so you have the dirt at your back. Close your eyes. everything. Do you see for yourself? You see for the dead, for the unborn. Do you listen for yourself? You listen for the dead, for the unborn. Your ancestors are in that dirt. All the living and all the dead 
are holding you up. Now, stand. They're still there, aren't they? It's time to move, to entangle yourself everywhere with everyone. So the next time you lay down in the dirt, you will have so much more to tell them. Pate fixed up three bikes instead of one.
I can see in these letters that the outside world has extremes of beauty and tragedy beyond anything I've known. They were right. The letter never made it. The season before this one, the war, seems so horrible. baby. Before setting up in Cairo Village, Dr. Fumio roamed the land curing people. It must have been hard when he wasn't around anymore, especially for people who couldn't travel to the village. Traders used to come to the outskirts of the village. The war put an end to this.
Um, I forgot what I was going to say. We learned about old technology in school, but not much about animals. What are these strange goat-like creatures? Are they simply goats? My first time petting an animal. I think it went pretty well. it felt off. I guess I had beginner's luck before. Okay, now I got it back. I'm in control. I can easily pet certain four-legged animals.
from the village, these cranes look like little creatures, grazing. I had no idea how huge they are. I feel nourished in these sights by the unfamiliarity of it all. These means of connection, long in disuse, are certainly telling me something about the world. Will they be used again in the next season? I cycled through landscapes, seeing them for the first and last time. I had no idea when I left my home how the season would end, or more importantly, how soon. On a cold, damp day, I feel true loneliness for the first time. Nobody could have described with words how big this world is, how it goes and goes. I passed through it, where others passed before me.
is out here alone. Two voices is like me and my mom. We can survive, but eventually you need more. Three voices as complex as life is supposed to be. I could listen forever. feeling they use these music boxes to fall asleep. Looks like they made it out of here. But what is this group? In the empty places, I found companionship in the tapes I recorded before leaving home. The elder told me the story of her life. I listened back to it, ready to note down anything that seemed important.
Let's set the scene for the listener. Whoever that might be. This is the elder speaking. We're sitting in the plaza, saying goodbye to a dear soul. We're here to see if there's anything useful in my mind that could help you on your trip. A century's worth of memories, dreams, fantasies, visions, like a big old haunted library. When I die, this library will burn down. But which book should we check out first? I don't have all the answers. But I do feel the story of my life could help you understand what kind of world is out there. It's okay not to understand everything right away. The moment may pass before you've gotten a firm hold on it. But as long as you're there to witness it, to take it down in your journal, you and others to come will someday take the time to make sense of it all. Francis Kale, if you must know. You can call me Frank. Or Elder. Or the Elder. Or Elder Frank. You know, whatever. I don't care. I was born on the ocean. My mother and father worked on a cruise ship. The short-lived but glorious watery republics. Floating cities. Most won their independence by the time I was born. How can I describe them? They were a jewel of the golden season. Pleasure boats with a radical political program. How nice. The golden age was a time of flags, logos, mottos, mastheads. My mom taught me to read them. She was a ship's philosopher. My dad was a recycling engineer. Recycling on the ship was a matter of life and death. We had to get the most out of every object and watt of energy. My grandparents played with the past. They changed it like we change our wardrobe. So it was a different answer every time. But they often said we are exiles of some kind. Exiled royalty from a secret lineage, blood that glows in the dark. Or we're exiled from the mouth of some great leviathan. When they were older, they just said, we're from here, we're from right now. I loved the way the ship would tilt and roll with the waves, especially as I fell asleep. It was so comforting. Picture me as a kid in bed, feeling the swaying of the ship. It was like being rocked to sleep as a baby. I loved exploring the ship too. Wandering through the suites, the swimming pool, the game rooms, and oh, there were two dance halls. A large, elegant one and another one in the basement. A lot of my firsts were down there. My first dance, my first kiss, and so forth. Our ship was taken over in the early days of the war. That was the end of the watery republics. I heard the dance hall in the basement became a weapons cache. It took me half my life to say goodbye to the world I knew in my youth. Imagine me and my parents and everyone I knew being escorted off the ship by a company of soldiers. And I'm thinking, I hope they don't make a mess of my room. I was embarrassed by the younger kids who were crying their eyes out. But they knew, I guess. Yes, the start of the war was a turning of seasons. And we had been warned the season was going to end. Oh, but we didn't understand the warning. You see, one night, along a coastline, we saw beautiful lights shimmering above the water. Later, we found out this was an ancient warning system. 
It hadn't been used in so long, we didn't know what it meant. We just thought, well, ain't that pretty. We tried to stick together and camped out on the coast of the prismatic grounds. I thought it was all temporary. I couldn't see how things would return to normal, but I was sure they would. Aside from that delusion, I was okay. Are you sure you want me to keep going? The story gets darker from here on. Okay, so... Conditions in the camp were getting worse. My mom got lost in thought for long periods of time. She'd be completely still for hours, days we realized she caught. Well, now we call it time misperception disorder. It's when you lose your ability to tell how much time is passing. A minute can feel like an hour. A day can pass in 10 seconds. We don't know exactly. Our consciousness is delicate. There are minerals and sounds that can adjust it. Dr. Fumio's greatest fear was that someone would use this as a weapon. We heard about a traveling doctor who could cure these kinds of diseases. I decided to go find him. I found out his name was Dr. Fumio, and he traveled with his son, Lucio. People talked about him like he was a god. The prismatic grounds had roped almost everyone into their system until they reached the far wastes and heard no for the first time. Nobody reacted well. It got to the point of, you know, neighborhood against neighborhood. Grievances had been buried so deeply we forgot they were there. It felt like things changed overnight. I'd pass through a city and hear later that they torn each other apart. I could not imagine it. I described my mom's condition to Dr. Fumio. He said there was no cure yet, but there was a village high in the mountains. He thought it was high enough he'd have a better chance at treatment. Lower places are more dangerous. Valleys are the worst. He invited me to join them in going to the village. But I wanted to go back and get my parents and bring them with me. I packed my things and got ready to leave the next morning. That night, my mom came to me in a dream. She was standing in a field of flowers. I groaned since I last saw her. We were the same height. She pressed a finger hard into my palm. She taught me well. I knew the meaning of the gesture. I knew no matter what I did, I'd never see my parents again. In the morning, I told Dr. Fumio I would follow him to Karo Village. The next few weeks were very physically tiring, hiking, climbing. And when we found the village, building, planting, cleaning, Fumio brought sick people from all over the world, and they got better. The treatments worked. Everyone was healing. So why couldn't I? One day, we got word the war was over. We never found out how it ended. It was like peace just swept over the earth in a split second. There was a party in the plaza to celebrate the end of the war. But I couldn't bring myself to go. Yes, it was over, but it had taken my home, my family. That night, as I was falling asleep, I felt the bed tilt and sway gently, as if it was being tossed on the waves of the ocean. 
as if I was back in my bedroom on the ship. As if I was back in my mother's arms. Being rocked gently to sleep. I knew I was finally home. And nothing could hurt me. I imagine coming upon a place as hidden and singular as my own village. Eventually, I found myself circling a valley, looking for a way in. Oh. The uh, valley. Um. W one second. What will happen when we do as instructed and gather around this fake person? Is that a strodofop? Um, yeah, wh what are they called? What is it? I love old gear like that. It's getting more and more rare. I had a camera, but it broke. Not that interesting of a story, I guess. What are you doing here? The whole thing, huh? You're young. You, you got time. What kind of stuff are you recording? That's the way to do it, if you ask me. If anyone asked me, I mean. The valley would be a good place to use those tools. Too bad it's closed down. Let me finish up here, huh?
I'm not the first to do this. Just the first in a long time. Hey. This was like a second home for a while. That was fun earlier when you showed up. And I was carrying the cardboard man. You were like, who are these guys? <laughs> I've been pretty bored here. You know, the valley's gonna be flooded soon. That's why nobody can go in there. The dam is falling apart. It's too old. There's nobody left who knows how to repair it. We're taking it down so we'll know when it'll collapse. It gives us time to evacuate everyone. Greyhounds. We're a community organization. We do all kinds of fun stuff. Health clinics, mine sweeping, daycare, evacuations, weddings. We're new. It was supposed to be because we're helpful yet neutral. We took a vote and decided to change the name though. We want something more friendly sounding. I'm excited to find out what it would be. We're trying to get new things going. But it's hard. The past really has a tight grip on people. It doesn't feel like a fair fight. So we're trying to, well, anyway. It's funny, I stood guard here for a week and I've only seen greyhounds like myself and valley people on their way out. But now I see you and you're like a new element or something. I have never met anyone doing what you're doing. And uh, we greyhounds gotta support new things. So, hmm. I'm not supposed to let anyone in. How can I? Jeez. I think you should go down into the valley and take a look. Gotta try something here. Dang it. I was trying to wink. Well, you get the idea. Go on and put that old gear to use. You can take my map of the valley too. I don't need it anymore. I'll be down if they gave one up around midnight. See you then. I met a grey hand. He let me into the valley. I think he wanted me to record what the grey hands were up to. And he gave me a map. The assembly point seemed like a good place to start. I wonder what he expects me to discover in the valley. It seems like I'll have to wait for night to enter the shrine. I'll think about what kind of visitor I want to be.
I am probably the last person that will ever be welcomed here by this sign. The elder told me there's very little information about the years before 500. All above will remain. All below will wash away. I have wondered about the lives beneath unkept graves. The elder warned me about valleys. She said they were dangerous. I feel a dulcet tension in the air. I enter to see the moment between seasons. Time seems to pass differently around here. I feel so heavy and so light at the same time. I'm not really alone. I'm with myself. I'm with the earth. A village that was created as a place to heal. Is that where my instinct to try to help comes from? It's so strange to imagine I'll be shaped by places and people I haven't met yet. So strange to imagine that I might feel at home somewhere else.
I wonder what the flowers have to say. If my big prayer is wrong, if it goes against divine will, please spare the people of this valley. We're so desperate for peace. Memory told over and over again. These metal animals are looking up, expectantly. The people here are so weak. I heard gunshots last night. That was us. <laughs> what is that? Look at the pond, the water. What is that pattern? Should we run or something? Something frightening happened in this memory, but what was it?
flower has a shimmering quality. A green space. I feel memory in the air like pollen. It reminds me of a poem my dad was never able to finish. The first line was, if you want to awaken the dead, just whisper. It sounds like they want to adapt their organization to the people in it, and not the other way around. Imagine if the man I met is the only living gray hand and the rest are cardboard. There seems to be suspicion about the real condition of the dam and why it's being taken down.
They say they're going to build the next season. How? Grey hands want to end this season. The gray hands seem to care what people think about them. The elder also said low places are dangerous. The city is high up like my village. Maybe it is safer. It's hard to imagine something new, a new way of living, but they're trying. There must be a lot of people going to the city if they need to keep track of them with cards. The gray hands are the future in all its uncertainty, the good and the bad, the hope and fear of progress. The loneliness of this season will be left behind. A collective project is coming. <laughs>